Hello again out there, everybody. I'm going to get ready to give you my take on the conference championships this weekend. If you remember in my picks on the divisional playoffs, I in the NFC, I picked Seattle against San Francisco. In the AFC, I picked... I picked Denver against New England. Well, I went two for two last week. Whereas back in the wild card round, I went four and zero. So I'm six and two in the playoffs right now, which isn't too bad. So anyway, I'm going to give you my take on the conference championships that are happening on Sunday even Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening and. I will start with the early game first, which is the NFC Championship, so let's go. Alright, the first game on Sunday is the NFC Championship game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Atlanta Falcons. Last week, the 49ers whipped up on the Green Bay Packers 45-31 in a game that wasn't that close. Why wasn't it that close? Well, Colin Kaepernick basically played out of his mind last week. He rushed for a league record for a quarterback, 181 yards, and he rushed, and he passed for another 263. So, and he had he accounted for four touchdowns, and he was just out of his mind. Not to be outdone, Frank Gore also rushed for 118 yards on a touchdown in that game, and Michael Crabtree. Ever since Colin Kaepernick has been inserted into the starting lineup, which at the time was a excuse me a pretty controversial decision considering Alex Smith had done really good in the first part of the season as the starter but Michael Crabtree has really come into his own ever since Colin Kaepernick was inserted as the starter last week against the Packers he had nine receptions for 119 yards and two scores and although I don't think Kaepernick's gonna need to do He's not going to have to be out of his mind this week, but but they're but they're going to need to run the ball like like norm like they normally do. They're going to need more of what well, what they did last week against the Packers against the Falcons. So they're going to so they have a chance to win the, this game. So and as far as the Falcons go, so some notes on them. Matt Ryan finally got the monkey off his back. He won his first playoff game, although. He had to he had to bring he had to bring the Falcons back after after Seattle took, ended up taking the league late in the fourth quarter in that game. They were, Falcons were up twenty to nothing at halftime in this game, and and Seattle made a furious comeback behind Russell Wilson. But but give credit where it's due. Matt Ryan brought he brought the Falcons back after, after Seattle took the lead twenty eight twenty seven and. Matt Bryant kicked a 49-yard field goal to send him into the championship game this week. And, you know, Matt, Matt Ryan, he he had a couple couple of big mistakes in that game. Or, not big mistakes, but he, he at times in the game, he was pretty erratic. He threw a couple of interceptions in that game, even though he did throw for three touchdowns. So... And as far as what as far as what the Falcons are going to need to do to win this game, they're going to have to keep Colin Kaepernick in check. They're not going to they're not going to be able to play man too much because because if they play man defense too too much, they Kaepernick's just going to go off on one of his runs and he's going to smoke them like he did the Packers last week. So as far as what I think that's going to happen in this game, excuse me. As far as what I think is going to end up happening, Falcons have won a lot of close games this year, so especially at home, and they've won some on the road as well. But in this game, I I find it really hard to think that they're going to win this game unless they can force Kaepernick into turnovers. But other than that, Kaepernick, I, I see Kaepernick having a I don't think he's going to have the same kind of a game that he had against the Packers. Well, that would be, probably be too much to ask. But I think, but I think he will be solid in this game, and I think Jim Harbaugh will make his first trip to the Super Bowl, and the Niners will make their first trip to the Super Bowl since the 1994 season. And I believe they're going to win this game 31 to 24. 
And now for my take on the AFC Championship game. All right, the late game on Sunday is the AFC Championship game between the Baltimore Ravens and the New England Patriots, which is a rematch from Week 3 uh, in Baltimore this year. A game that was won by the Ravens, 31-30 on a last-second field goal by Justin Tucker as time expired. Well, this improbable run by the Ravens continues with their... They had, they had an epic game last week against the Denver Broncos, winning in double overtime by the score 38-35. To me, it almost seems like they're on a mission ever since that Ray Lewis announced his retirement right before the playoffs started. And, and another thing that Joe Flacco is slowly becoming that elite quarterback that he thinks he is already. And I think what could really stamp him as an, as an elite quarterback would be a victory in this game against the Patriots, which would put them in their, into his first Super Bowl and the franchise's second. And it's... As far as what I think the Ravens need to do, I think Ray Rice is going to have to be big in this game again. Because he, if he's running the ball like like he did in the first matchup where he had over 100, just over 100 yards, they, they can set up play action. And they and Flacco is one of the best deep ball passers in the league. And that's, that's something that the Patriots are not so good at, de defending the deep ball so much. And... And when you've got guys like Anquan Bolden who can move the move the chains, and you got Torrey Smith who who is their deep threat, and you got when you got Dennis Pitta going across the middle, I mean that's there's some really he's got some really nice weapons to work with. Although, although last week their special teams weren't very special at all because they they gave up a punt return touchdown and a kick return touchdown to Trenton Holiday on the of the Broncos, but. But but they're gonna so they're gonna need to shore that up and the thing is their special teams are pretty good this year so but now I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the Patriots as far as far as they go they're gonna be once again without the services of one Rob Gronkowski who he rebroke his arm in the first quarter of the game last week against the against the Houston Texans and he's already been put on IR so his season is over but. But they've adjusted without him. They went 4-1 and one without him this year. And in the first matchup against the Ravens, they didn't ever have Aaron Hernandez. But he will be playing in this game. So, And it's not like, they, it's not like they're totally devoid of weapons anyway. Because, because when you got Wes Walker in the slot, you got Brandon Lloyd. And you, and you got the aforementioned Aaron Hernandez. I mean, that's, that's some pretty good weapons right there as well. Excuse me. Um, one thing about the Patriots that's that's normally a common misconception about them is that they don't have a running game. You probably could have said that in recent years, but I don't think that's so true today. Or with this team, yeah, yeah their their top running back is Stephen Ridley, who he rushed for over a thousand yards this year, and then you got you got Danny Woodhead who. I mean, he, he, he'll catch some passes out of the backfield for you. And he, he went down in that game in the, on the first series. And he was replaced by Shane Vereen, who he had over 100 yards in total. He had over 100 total yards last week and three touchdowns. So he didn't play like Ben Vereen. Let's just put it that way. But one thing to, uh, that the Ravens aren't, they can't really do is you don't want to blitz Tom Brady too much because he will eat you alive. He, when the, this year when the when defenses have sent, sent ex, extra rushers, he's he hasn't thrown no interceptions and he threw like 22 touchdowns this year. So, uh, I think special teams are going to be big in this game because, well, Patriots also they had special teams issues last week too because Daniel Manning had a couple he had a couple of big returns in that game, he had a 94-yard kickoff return on the opening series. Yeah, granted they only they had to settle for a field goal there, but still. And then there, then he also had another return of 63 yards. So, so special teams are going to be key in this game. 
And as far as what, what I think is going to happen in this game, obviously both teams have a lot to play for because Baltimore is trying to send Ray Lewis out and trying to send him out a Super Bowl winner in his last year. Well, as, whereas New England is trying to get back to the Super Bowl for to get Tom Brady another chance to win his fourth Super Bowl, which would put him up in the class of Joe Montana and Terry Bradshaw as the only... They would be the only three guys to win four Super Bowls apiece. And Montana and Bradshaw are already in the Hall of Fame, and Tom Brady will be there too one day. But as far as what I think is going to happen in this game... As much as I would like to pick Baltimore in this game, I because I I think they are in a mission to win, get Ray Lewis back to the Super Bowl. I I just think Tom Brady and and his cast of characters and the game being in New England, all I think it's going to be too much for Baltimore. But I think it's going to be close, and I think the Patriots are going to win thirty-one twenty-eight, which will set up a matchup with the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl forty-seven. Let me know what you. Th let me know who you think is going to be in the Super Bowl, and give your, give me your, give me your comments on who you think will be there, and and I will be back in a couple weeks with my Super Bowl predictions. So I will see you later. Bye bye.